you know, the, 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 the train was off the track. And we sat and, and discussed that, what that looked like, what our expectations was. And, and we began where, where educators should begin. And I'm not saying it's going to solve every one of your problems, but we began with, we've got to focus on kids. We've got to focus on students, because that's our business. That's what we do. And we've got to get out of the way our professional and personal belief systems that are going to come to that. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. In a minute. The enemy of grade is good. San Jose County, number two ranked school district in the state of Florida. We're 67 of 67 funded. Not proud of that, all right? But we are still number two. Now, how do you take that type of return on investment and make it work? It's all about relationships, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Academic success has a stumbling block. Why would I put that in close? Because it's not true, but it is, all right? I hear, heard every single day, and still hear this, but Mr. Ross, why, we, why do we need to do this? We're pretty doggone good, all right? Doggone is what we use in the South. It means it's I presented in Boston one time. <laughs> After the first four minutes, I said, raise your hand any time. Raise it any time. Okay. Interrupt me, don't mind a question raised. About two minutes into the presentation, the guy says, where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> now you know where I'm from. All right, there we go. <laughs> Academic success, that, that idea of the enemy of being great, uh, you know, is, is important. But being where we are was a stumbling block to us, right? I will say some terms that many of you are familiar with. We've got common core standards, we've got park assessments, we've got next generation learning. In Florida, we never met a standard we didn't like. It's all moving, right? And I really believe, really believe that if you pop in a standard about how many and how you shoot today, we we all right? We really would. We have the State Board of Education believes that to be important. That's who we were. That's it. And I want to paint a picture of you of how difficult it was. And where we are today is completely different. How did the work with that leader evaluation <coughs> move us forward? I, 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 can't, I can't tell you in 20 minutes how profound the impact had was for us. Right? Remember, what did we begin with? This is an interactive lesson. What did we begin with? Dysfunction. Dysfunction. Okay. Who did we focus on to solve that dysfunction? Students. Students. Students right? So Superintendent Rosick, what about re-election? I'm an elected superintendent. I'm elected over four years. I have elected school board. I have 26,000 students, plus or minus all of them gifted, by the way. And, <laughs> they really are, all right? And, you know, 1,783, 84 this morning. I just approved another teacher this morning. So uh, that's who we are. About 3,000 employees total. We're the largest employer in Santa Rosa County. Our county is our school district. You get the picture, okay? It's large, all right? So why move forward, all right? That change, EBL and Race to the Top <coughs> married in a way that we didn't expect, but it merged very nicely, all right? So when you begin to think about what you're gonna be like in five or 10 years, you best be adopting Common Core and evidence-based leadership in some form or fashion. For us, it married very, very well. But it was a change, it was a paradigm change, it was a complete shift of thought for us in Santa Rosa County, our teachers really, really began to kick back on it. And why? Well, number one reason, because they were just so much coming at them at one point in time. And you're, you're with me, you understand that, okay? Our teachers were just buried in, in change. And that change was very, very tough. But what we did, we focused, right here, this really is the kind of, we focused on relationships as a bridge builder builder for employee performance. We saw our board and I and my staff, which is they make me look very, very good by the way, all right? We saw what was coming. We saw administrators and teachers, employees who deal with children every single day being held accountable in a way that we never had in the past. We jumped ahead of that just a tad and working with Janet and Robin and developing some accountability systems and some survey systems and some measurement systems and some reporting systems that all were very transparent, we began to build that relationship back. My union president and I went to a TYYO, invited by Mr. Studer. We sat together and there was a change at that TYYO. Can't remember what TYYO 
stands for? I love the word. All right. <laughs> 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 Thank you and your organization. To the next level. To the next level. Got it? All right. Rhonda, my union president, sat right beside me. Wonderful lady, by the way. Profoundly is a teacher. Good lady. Okay? She sat right beside me, and we sat for two solid days and listened to why should we move ourselves to the next level. And we thought about together that night, it really is about relationships, right? Relationships overcome or burden you in one way, shape, form, or fashion. There was a point in that presentation, and you remember this, all of you have been to the TYYO will, where Mr. Stewart said, unions versus administration, or whatever your terminology is, really is about relationships because we all want the same thing. We want excellence in teachers. We want excellence in instruction. We want excellence in employees. Who can argue against that? Nobody. Absolutely, and I remember it like it was yesterday. Ron and I look at each other going, you know, we have a whole lot more in common than we have different. He, Mr. Steer, walked right to Rhonda under this far and said, would you not agree that you would like to dismiss a bad teacher? Oh, wow. <laughs> I got her now. Right? She nodded her head, then he looked at me and said, and wouldn't you, Mr. Superintendent, like to reward a good teacher? You see, it's really about our expectations and relationships. Those relationships became a bridge pillar for our employee performance. We have developed the race to the top. Monies, employee evaluation systems that measure and cascade input from parents, students, and teachers on a daily basis. You've heard support card, if you're familiar with that. We do not like support cards at the district office, right? We don't like them. We have to do them. We know we have to do them. And we're polite. We put on a good face. Please give me your input. But the two of you that's marking me down, you best not want to do that. We have to talk joking about that, all right? But really, we looked at that the first time. It was a shock to us because we thought we thought, uh, what did I do? You're a good man, Jennifer, we'll be back on the right case. We're done. Any questions? All right. <laughs> we developed a, t a teacher evaluation instrument and an district evaluation instrument. And we'll talk about the process we did that because that relationship really was the focus of our, of our uh, process. First thing we said, and I met with Ron, our union president, remember, uh, excellence is important. We said, I said, hey, what, Ron? I said, we, we see what's coming with regard to teacher evaluation. 50% of a teacher's um, evaluation in the state of Florida now, by law, is required to be student performance based. The other part, that other 50%, is just as important. I'll talk about that just a little bit and how we got to that. But it was about the relationships that we had to have, starting with the union president and me, and then we cascaded that out all down through the, through the system. Simply put, you've heard the, the, the paradigm, you've heard the, the organizational structure here. I report to the board. Uh, I am accountable to them. I'm also accountable to my administrators. My administrators do the support card, parent surveys, teacher input, all that part of their evaluation. They're accountable all the way down to the line where teachers and parents and students are accountable as well. 5% of our teacher evaluation instrument is input from students. Yes. Students. And, you might say, and I'm K-12. You might say, how can a kindergartner give input on their teacher, all right? It's pretty consistent. The, the data doesn't really lie. It tells us the truth, all right? And we can deny it, but you're still going to have to deal with it, all right? That's so important. So these relationships help us build that bridge for employee evaluation. I talked about S 